I want to talk about world harvest today and um, something that a lot of Christians don't know much about, I'm finding. It's just, wow. I mean, anyway, to, if you have your Bible today, have your Bible, turn to uh, Matthew 9, uh, 35. This is one of my favorite scriptures because this is the very first prayer assignment that Jesus ever gave to his disciples. And uh, a prayer assignment is different than just general prayer and, you know, where we just pray whatever we want to pray. It's something that God grants. It's prayer that he grants, and he actually asks you to pray about it. And so we want to give special attention, of of course, to all of those. And so um, this scripture right here is really coming center stage for us. Uh, especially in this time, because we are so close to the second coming and everything is so accelerating all around us and you can even feel that. I mean, it's amazing. So I'm, before I unpack it, we'll just read it here. Uh, nine, Matthew nine thirty five. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming, the good news of the gospel of the kingdom and curing all kinds of disease and every weakness and infirmity. And when he saw the throngs, he was moved with pity and sympathy for them because they were bewildered and harassed, distressed, dejected, helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is indeed plenteous. But the laborers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to force out and thrust out laborers into his harvest. We're, we're feeling that force right now. We're feeling that, that sensation of being forced out. Actually, it's a kind of a nice feeling, actually. So if you could just imagine this whole scripture right here. Jesus is ascending a hill. And he's coming up onto um, kind of a platform on that hill where he's seeing throngs of people. And he's, he sees these throngs of people there. Uh, Jesus defines them as poor and weak and lame and shepherdless and demonized. People that have no purpose and probably less hope. Probably no one in this building can be defined that way as what he saw here. I mean, I remember when Jim went to, uh, Pastor Jim went to um, Indonesia one time. He said, Mother, I've never seen anything like that in all of my life. All the streets, every street was lined with people sitting on the curb smoking Hopeless, helpless, no purpose, and nothing to do. That's amazing, isn't it? And here we are sitting here with loads of the gospel and God just meeting us. And we can come here in this place and we can worship and we can know that we have a purpose. And we know that we have a home. And we know that if we don't, we know where to go to find one. Just an amazing thing if you ever really stop and think about it. So in this scripture, Jesus is looking out and he sees all these people and he sees that they have little hope. But it said he went to all cities and to every sickness and every weakness, all and every. Jesus was the all and every man. So from this perspective here, we can tell that Jesus went to every city, every village, every single unreached people group. Jesus was going there because he was the all and he was the every man. I believe that Jesus came in this earth, and I can back it up with Acts chapter 10, verse 38. I believe that Jesus came to pick a fight. 
with every single physical and spiritual manifestation of demon oppression that would ever be on this planet ever, even in the ages to come. So what happened right here in this scripture? I believe that Jesus was giving a burst of a revelation where this village that was before him, this natural village that was before him, was uh, transformed into a metaphor of every village, of all future peoples, in every nation, billions yet unborn, waiting to fill the earth. I believe he saw Buddhists. I believe he saw Muslims. I believe he saw Hindus. I believe he saw island people. I believe he saw pagan people, pagan tribes. And all the people of the world waiting to be liberated. Uh, when we went to the DR the first time, uh, we went into our little church that we had just planted. We were so proud. And it was all filled up with people, and they were so happy. By the way, their address in the DR is the garbage dump. But these people were so happy. They were so thrilled. Their children are dancing. Everybody is singing. And when I walked in the back door, and the place is packed full of people, even on the outside of the, the where there were no chairs, and even on the outside of the building, people were out there. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, you see, they're waiting for you. So all over the world, we here at Living Word Christian Center have people waiting for us to be obedient, to bring the gospel to them, which is our assignment to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. So that's our assignment. And so that's what they're waiting on. And I'm waiting too. Praise the Lord. So, so I believe that Jesus saw all these people, all these people waiting to be liberated. I believe he saw our names. I believe he saw the pain of the world, the anguish. I, I believe that he saw people uh, like a field of wheat, where as far as you could see, he saw people. So this is what's happening here, I believe, to him. So he wasn't just limited to this ascending, uh, ascending hill, uh, this little village here where he was, because actually he could reach those people himself, by just all by himself. But he was seeing into the future through time and space into another age. And so in this, he's getting a whole different perspective a whole different one. He'd never probably thought of it before, as we probably never thought of it before. And so in perspectives, I remember one time, one of the greatest perspectives I've ever gotten was I was doing a minister's conference in Emmeton, Switzerland. And there were people from, ministers from all over Europe. I'll tell you how they were. Um, you, you, it, when I was preaching, I would preach in English, then I would have a German interpreter, then I would have a French interpreter, then I would have a Russian interpreter, and then they would come back to me. And I had pretty much forgotten what I even said. <laughs> you know, I mean, with all that going on. Anyway, so this one day, the, some of the speakers, we decided we would go up to the very top of this mountain in Imiton and eat lunch. There was a restaurant up there. So we took this uh, gondola uh, trolley thing up the side of this mountain. I think Phil and Annie were with us, I believe, that time. Yeah. And, um, and um, we, we went up this mountain this day, and I remember as I would gain height and elevation, all of my perspective changed. Every place was a different place of unmatched beauty like I had never, ever seen. By the time I got to the top, uh, to that restaurant, I am telling you, it was the most amazing thing. Now, had the mountain changed? No. It was the same all the time. 
But what had happened is my perspective has changed. And that's one of the things I'm believing for today is that somehow God is going to make his way into our heart and we will have a different perspective of, um, uh, of our world. Um, so right here, Jesus, he turns, he's going to turn to his people and he's going to say, he, he's going to turn to them and he says, laborers, we've got to have laborers after what he's just seen. I mean, he's looked up through space and time, through the ages to another age. And so the first thing he's going to say to them is, we've got to have laborers. I can't do all this. We've got to have laborers. He needs healers of the sick. He needs caster out of devils, devil caster outers, however you would say that. He needs justice reformers. He needs proclaimers of the good news. So the same problem that was present right here in this scripture, we have the same problem really today. Actually, our collective human lostness is quite daunting if you think about it. It's pretty amazing. I mean, you could go, I could go through my whole Christianity, my whole life, my whole Christendom, and never, ever have one thought of world harvest. Do you realize that? Never have one thought that there is another person that exists on the face of the earth besides me. That's Western Christianity. I would say. But yet that was the main thing that Jesus said. Go ye into all the world. That was the first thing. The main thing that he said that we had to do. So Jesus then, he turns to these people and he says, in light of this problem, pray. I'm like, wow, you mean pray? You mean like pray? He didn't say, okay, we're going to get all the strategists from all over the world. We're going to get major programmers. We're going to get IT people. We're going to get us a flow chart. I'm telling you, this is going to be amazing how we're going to figure all this out. He didn't say that. He said, pray. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. So that, that was the marching orders for the ages to come, major marching orders for the ages to come that we would all pray. You know, I, I heard this uh, amazing story of this girl. She, she had just gotten born again, and uh, she was flipping through her Bible or had a flop and stop or something. And, and she, and she uh, kind of got it in her spirit about world harvest. And she thought, I don't even know anything about world harvest. What does that even mean, world harvest? So she decided that she would go to a world harvest conference. And so after the conference, every day, they announced that um, there was a board on the back of the uh, wall. And on this board, there was little bitty pieces of paper with uh, the names of people. And, and villages across the world. And you were to go up and get a little piece of paper and come back to your seat and open your paper. And then you were going to pray for whoever was on your paper. So she went up, got her piece of paper and sat down. And her, on her paper, it said, the JAT, J-A-T people. She, the JAT people? The JAT people. Okay, Lord. The JAT people. Here we go. We're going to pray for them. So um, she prayed. And uh, she finished, and people were still praying around her. So she went up to the other side of the board, way the other side of the board, and got a piece of paper. And she went back to her seat and opened it. It said, the Jat people. <laughs> so she was like, whoa, this must be the Holy Ghost. So she made a commitment to God to pray for these Jat people wherever they were in the world. And to, to, to just lift them up to the Lord every day, and she did. Two years passed, and she went to India with her church. And every single day, they would go to a different village, which this year, we, we might have that kind of experience where we get to go from one to the next. 
I'm believing for that, um, in Africa. Um, and so they went from one village to the next, and they would uh, minister the gospel. Then they would start a church, and then they would leave, and they would go to the next village. And um, so one of the, at the end of the day, uh, they came to this place, and they had ministered the gospel. And she said uh, she noticed that all these people in this village were just talking. The whole time they were talking uh, and, t- and telling, giving them the gospel message, these people were talking. They were talking among themselves and looking at each other. So at the end, at the very end of their uh, situation there, this, the chief of the tribe stood up and he said, we are very moved here by your message of Jesus Christ. And we as a village want to accept him as our Lord and Savior. We are the Jat people. Isn't that beautiful? So you can see from this story, the deciding factor of everything would be the prayer. So um, there is a place in the earth called the Resistant Belt. It includes the world's Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists. It is called the 1040 Window. If you put that up on the screens, please. It, uh, it is a rectangular area of North Africa, the Middle East, and Asia, approximately 10 degrees north and 40 degrees um, north of latitude of the equator. There is in this area 5.11 billion individuals in 8,717 distinct people groups. That 8,000 groups means, that means 8,000 languages. Um, 68.7% of these people groups are unreached. That doesn't mean they're unsaved. That means unreached means they have never heard the name Jesus. Now, we can't even, in America, we can't even imagine that. I mean, he's just a household name. Even if you're not saved, you know if somebody says Jesus some way, every day, all day long. But in in this place where we're talking about, um, they have never heard the name of Jesus. 1.6 billion have never heard. 70% of them are under the age of 35. And the children under the age of 15, approximately 2 billion, unreached, never heard before. Still, there are 7,000 people groups, 7,000 people groups, 7,000 languages of people that have never heard the name of Jesus. And one of the most interesting things about that is some of these people are born in a place, they live in that place, and they die in that place. They never learn another language. They only are there in that place. So somehow, supernaturally, God will have to give an evangelist the language of the people. That's kind of amazing, isn't it? That he will suddenly, you know, that's what happened to Nikki. That's how he learned Spanish. The Lord supernaturally gave it to him. But that's interesting to think about, that those people, they would have to know the language before they could ever even minister to them. So if you and I were going, we would have to know the language because there's no interpreter. Praise the Lord. In this 1040 window that you're looking at right here, this is home to the world's majority of poor people. Um... People exist on $100 a year. Um, There's a real remarkable, to me, overlap here between the poorest countries of the world and those that are least, the least evangelized. I think that's quite interesting. Uh, But I love this scripture. 
And I, I don't go there in my Bible very often because I get stuck there. And it's Psalms chapter 2 and verse 8 where it says, ask of me. This is like, this is like a dad and he's with his child and he just is like, ask of me anything that you would desire. This is what it reminds me of. This is the way the father's ask of me. He thought that would be the greatest thing on the earth I could ever give these people. Ask of me. And I will give you the nations for your inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. Wow. Did we ever do that? Did you ever ask the Lord for a nation? Did you ever ask him for the uttermost parts of the earth? Praise the Lord. One translation says this. What do you want? Name it. Nations as your present or your gift. Continents as a prize. You can even command them all just to dance for you. Or they could be thrown out in tomorrow's garbage dump. That's basically it right there. So today, we're going to pray. And um, the thing I chose for us to pray today, because uh, they are part of this congregation now, is our churches, our seven churches that we have started around the world. And um, I wanted to introduce you to their pastors today. So we have pictures of them that we're going to show you on the, and then we're going to pray over them. Um, if you would come, these are our four church, our four church pastors in uh, the Dominican Republic. The one on the left, Pastor Francis Marte and his wife, um, Kenya, they started their church. Uh, their address is the garbage dump. And they started their church because, um, he would preach in his yard, and his yard got really full of people on Sunday mornings. And so, and it, they would be there in the rain. I asked one of those pastors, I said to him, he, I say, he was showing me where they were going to put all their kids. Not this one, but Pastor Jose. I said to him, I said, well, where are you going to put the kids? This is the floor for all the people. This is the floor for the adults. Where's the kids going to be? They never had this thought. He goes, Will they be out in the field? I'm like, well, what about when it rains? He goes, they love the rain. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to be adding another level to this building. And that's why it took us so long to, the last time we were there, actually, uh, a month ago or so, we, um, he's the second pastor uh, up on your screen, Pastor Jose and his wife, Veronica. And so we added another level on that building. Um, the third one is Pastor Joel, and uh, that is his daughter. They have a bunch of kids. Wow, it's amazing. Um, and then the last one, he particularly wants us to pray for his wife. Now, he, that's Antonio. The last one on the right-hand side is Antonio. He's not married, and he wants a wife. And Pastor Mac and... Um, Three others, they broke ground this last time uh, that we were there. If you would have a picture of that groundbreaking. There they are. They're breaking ground for uh, Pastor uh, Antonio, Antonio's building. Okay, so let's go on and let's, uh, Brandon, let's show them all of them so they can just get familiar with the picture. And then we're going to go back and we're going to pray for each one of these pastors. Amen? If my phone will cooperate with me. Wow, what in the world has happened? One of those deals. Okay. The second one, I, I think I can just probably tell you, the second picture up, um, this one is Guatemala, and this is Pastor Carlos and his wife. And you can see their building. Now, you, you bought that building for them. This is their building. And um, 
And that's the, them with their kids. All right. Um, I'm sorry, my phone is not cooperating. All right, I'll just have to remember. Um, this is our pastor, and we will, none of us will ever know them um, unless some way we can sneak into Venezuela. This church was started by our, our uh, Spanish pastor, and that is their building next to them. And uh, that is them with their children. And I have forgotten their names. And I can't find it in my thing. All right, and the next is Columbia. Uh, Columbia, they are Arama grads, and they have invested a lot in children that, that are involved, have been involved in domestic violence. So they probably will have an orphanage there, and that, that is their children. Uh, he and his daughter, his wife died, and he and his daughter uh, pastor there in Columbia. Next, and this is Ireland. Uh, this is Bradley, Bradley Beebe and his wife, Amy. So that's all the church pastors. We also have uh, Pastor Wayne. He, he doesn't go by pastor. Pastor Wayne and Lizzie and Liz Dooley. And they, in the DR, they are our arrangers for everything. In other words, when we go there, uh, they arrange all of our trips to see other people. They are missionaries from uh, the Assemblies of God, and they have retired in, um, in, in Santiago. Also with them, too, is Pastor Victor. He was in the first, in the second slide, uh, breaking ground with Pastor Mac. And um, his name was Victor uh, Garcia. And uh, he also, he's the second one there. He also helps us tremendously with our work there and um, keep us going. So we're going to go back right now, and we're going to go to our prayer points. Pastor, you want to come and help me pray for these? No. He doesn't. Okay. No, That's good. That's good. I don't care if he doesn't come. I can do it by myself. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> so, what do you want me to pray for? Why are you acting so weird? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to go back to the top, and we're going to do, do our, D, uh, our DR pastors first. We'll start with uh, Pastor Francis. And um, his wife, uh, Kenya, they have two little girls, and they make us the best banana drinks. I wish I knew how to. So they're the ones on the left-hand side, and um, well, we're going to pray. Where are they? On the left. On the left. That's the first church. That's the first That's one. That's the little in. pearl of a building in the middle of the garbage dump. I mean, it's, it's amazing. All right, so we're going to pray. Right now, and so we want you to lift up your voice first in other tongues. Everybody, let me hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We lift up our churches and these pastors and ministers that are connected to us. We pray, Father, that you would lead Pastor Francis by the Holy Ghost, that he would be guided and led with wisdom. God, that you would protect him and give him all the natural resources and the supernatural resources that he needs. Equip him. Let, equip me, just, him with let me just say this. I hate to interrupt. But this last trip, he didn't have a house. He yeah, lived he in a little... A he, little Pasteboard I mean, box. They'd gotten tin and cardboard yeah. from the dump and built a place. Yeah. So for $30,000, we're building them a three bedroom home uh, right down from the church. I'm telling you, you <coughs> y'all have no idea. <coughs> you're just like, you would just be. But you're going to get to go. Yeah. You're next. Y'all like better be getting ready. Okay, maybe we should pray about your readiness to go. 
Come on, Lynn, get with it. All right, all right. Okay, so we're next, next was Pastor Jose. Pastor Jose, we're going to pray for he and Veronica. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father, Lord, that you are leading them and guiding them yes. by your wisdom and by the Holy Ghost That's in right. the name we of Jesus, that. that you give them, Lord, <clears throat> all of the equipment. And you know, Lord, all <clears throat> of the supernatural things that they are praying yes. for and for those people that That's they right. want to reach. And so, Father, you're helping them oh, today. Lord, we plead Sunday. the blood of Jesus over we them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. you open up every door I'm for them in the name yeah. of Jesus. Thank we you, thank Jesus. you for all the miracles that are breaking out in yeah. the DR right now. That's and we right. thank you for thank the you next Lord. pastor as Pastor you, Joel and his wife. Uh, we pray for Pastor Joel right now that yeah. you would guide him and lead him yes, by the Lord. Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, that you would protect him and give him supernatural equipment of every single yes. thing that he needs in Jesus' Lord, name. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for Pastor Antonio. Hallelujah. And we ask you, Father, to get him yes, a wife. Lord. A good wife. Yeah, that's right. A God fearing wife. <coughs> we thank you, Lord, right now. She's off. That's right. Hmm? What? Never mind. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. We Absolutely. thank you, Lord, for their building, that it is going up. It is exactly what they want to do. Exactly. And we thank you, Lord, that you. this is going to be a speedy, a very speedy <clears throat> going up of this building in Jesus' name. That nations, Lord, would open to these pastors. This whole nation would That's open right. to these pastors, Pastor Vicky, right. v Victor, Pastor Wayne and Liz, that it would open. There would be an opening there for us to work more in the name of Jesus. That's right. And all of our destiny and all of our purpose in this country would be realized in Jesus' name. Yes, okay, Lord. so secondly, we'll go Hallelujah. to the next slide, Brandon. Okay. So this is Guatemala. Um, this pastor, is, to me, it seems very equipped in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He has a really strong vision uh, for all of Guatemala. He came out of the assemblies, yeah. and um, this is his building next to him. So we're going to lift him up now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you're leading and guiding this pastor by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now that you give him supernatural equipment for signs and for wonders and for miracles in Guatemala in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you open supernatural doors for us in the name of Jesus. We praise you and bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Next. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is our pastors in Venezuela, and we thank you, Father, and we praise you and yes. bless you for them. We thank you, Lord, for their protection every single day. We thank you, Lord, that you're moving in this nation like never before, for there for a revival to break yeah. out for this man and for his wife who are so dedicated to this remnant that is there in Venezuela. We thank you, Lord, for an yeah. open door to this nation for us in Jesus' name. We just believe mm -hmm. that nation changes. In the name that of you Jesus. you bring yes, down we, we the ungodly to, government yes, that is there. In the name Lord, of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for bringing... Jesus to that entire nation, in the bringing name of the Jesus. word of God to yes, that Lord. entire nation. Yes, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Next. Thank you, Lord. Next. Um, this is uh, Colombia, and they have lots of children, and the Lord is handing children to them who have been under the influence of domestic violence. That's the dad. And That's his, his daughter. daughter, and there's a lot of brothers and other family members that are working with With him, them in uh, that in, work. And in, she, in that work. she, I don't know about him, but she is a Rhema grad. This is the one that we um, actually bought the building uh, almost a full year yeah. ago and then discovered that it would take another 75000 to finish the, the remodel and preparation. So we'll have about $120,000 in that building, which is still a deal, you know, mm. but uh, more but I, than... I think they're going to probably want an orphanage there and other things there, so we'll be... 
addressing those. But we things. pray for them, Lord. We thank lift you, them Lord. up. Thank you, We Father. thank you for removing the obstacles to building permits and finishing the project. And thank you, Jesus. we believe we will thank be you, dedicating Lord. that thank building you. next spring. Yes, Lord. Thank you, In Father. Jesus' name, that new building. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the next, I believe, is Ireland. Um, Bradley and Amy Beebe. And they, too, are Rayma grads, and they just started at work in Ireland. Uh, we actually rented their building for them in Ireland so that they could have their work. We call it partnering with them. This is unlike a, a church plant in that this was already a church and uh, going and whatnot, and uh, they just didn't have a place to go. So we provided the building for them. But, uh, you know... Uh, it's, I don't care how you, the Lord puts it together. The whole purpose is for us to enable the word in these nations to begin uh, springing forth and growing and changing, changing that country. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's good. It's the but, more information they have, the better off yeah. they are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's so take Father, a moment and pray for this country. Yes, okay, right now. Lord, we thank you. For America. For bringing change to America. This is, this is you know, we know uh, <laughs> so many things that are wrong, it's hard to, to verbalize all yes, of Lord. them. Yes, Lord. But we know that your hand yes. gave birth to America, yeah. and your hand has never been lifted from America, and Thank we you, will see Thank her fulfill all your will, all your purpose. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> we understand Thank the Lord. need to do what we need to do responsibly as citizens Jesus. and Christians. Thank you, Lord. We need to go vote. We need to put Christians in office. Thank you, Lord. We speak to God the evil, demonic men and, women. men and women that are corrupting this nation now in political places. We ask you to pull them down. In the pull name them of down, Jesus. Lord, and replace Thank them. You, Help Lord. us do our part in seeing them replaced with godly men and godly women. Lord, we speak thank you, Lord. Thank life you. to America. Yes, Lord. We thank a you that is righteousness reigns. Yes, Lord. We believe that thank as you, we Father. take Jesus to other nations, not just this ministry, but everybody that is going into the world takes Jesus to other nations. You will, we will reap in America a harvest of your presence and your power, your thank revival you, being poured out upon this, you, this Lord. nation, this Lord. Nation we believe advancing. we're in that day. It is advancing. The kingdom of God is advancing. Yes. We yes, are not Lord. diminishing in the name of Jesus. Lord. It is Lord. not as a troubled nation, but a nation yes. where righteousness yes. reigns. Yes. Raise Thank up you, this nation. Fill Thank it, you, Lord. Lord. Fill it up with born-again, spirit-filled men and women who know yeah. the plan of God. Oh, we thank you, Father, that you have given us the authority that we have yeah. in the name of Jesus and through his blood. And we you made us to sit, Father, in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That's right. And you made us to rule and to reign right. over principalities yes. and powers and mm -hmm. every wicked spirit in yes, high places. So we rule and reign in this nation right, in the name Lord. of Jesus. Devil, you have yeah. to listen yeah. to us. That's right. We hold the blood over all things that pertain to me, to my life, and the life of America. I forbid you, Satan, to work in yes, any right. way in our right. life, so in the, the life blood, of this church, the, in the life of this nation. Blood, so. I forbid you to work, to plan, to operate, to pursue, to make evil laws, or bring forth any yes, ungodliness. Lord. We paralyze you in the name of Jesus, Satan. Every plot right. of conspiracy from the kingdom of darkness must cease to exist in Jesus' name. So Satan, so take your you. hands off of our schools, right. our school right. boards, our That's education right. system, That's our right. institutions of learning, our government agency. Take yes, your hands so off of our Supreme about. Court, Under the justice so system, the FBI, and all counterterrorism. 
organizations. Take your hands off of it in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father, right now that you've said you're going to send us a revival. A revival, a Lord. A coming down of heaven. Heaven's going to come down. Heaven will come we down. We speak to the thank spirit you, of wokeness yes. and we curse it yes, in, in America. Jesus we name. absolutely, Lord. That cannot take root in this it nation. It cannot take root. It cannot. It, it cannot will stay. Not. It cannot even be We thank be you, here. Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, for revival, for the outpouring for your of presence, the Holy Ghost. Father. Make, yourself known. Da da Make yourself known in yes, every city across yes, the nation. Yes. Have we your way, you, Father, in this land. Heal our land. We ask you, Father, for your protection on every border. Yes. Land. Yes air and sea in Jesus name and Lord we, you, Lord. we speak you, now Father. to the nations we're going into this next year thank you Jesus. 10 church plants this next year at least Lord we thank you for preparing the way thank you, in Lord. El Salvador in Uruguay in Bolivia in, Mexico. in Kinshasa Africa Lord in Mexico we thank you for preparing the way in these places that we're planning that you put on our hearts to go. And we believe the right contacts with the right people, the financial capacity, all of the things that are needed to make it happen. We thank you for it now. You've called us to do this. So your provision is even now being provided to enable these things to thank occur. You, Jesus. We thank you for a Holy Ghost year, Lord in church planning and a Holy Ghost for America. We thank you for a Holy Ghost year for every family in this church. Lord, as we give ourselves over to your will, we can rest assured that your hand of blessing, protection, and provision uh, will be evident in every life and every family here. We give you the praise for a wonderful year in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's stand, please.